What are the similarities between Indonesia and Malaysia? Not only we share the mutually intelligible language, historically we are also part of the same Nusantara people who are now diverged into different ethnicities over time. What more interesting is, we share the similar colonization history and immigrants that somehow shape who we are today. Hi, my name is Ivan and welcome to Fela's Passport. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much to every one of you that watched my previous video over here that talk about Donghua Indonesians and Malaysian Chinese. Thank you so much. The response are overwhelming. Terima kasih kerana menonton video saya dan saya minta maaf jika saya tidak sempat untuk reply komen satu persatu. So today, I would like to bring you in understanding the differences of our Chinese festival in both Indonesia and Malaysia, particularly the food because we all know food unites people. The first wave of Chinese immigration starts more than 500 years ago, where Chinese Muslim traders from the eastern coast of China arrived at coastal towns of Indonesia and Malaysia in the early 15th century. They were led by mariner Zheng He, Zheng He who commanded several expeditions to Southeast Asia during the Ming Dynasty. This is where the Chinese traders are married to the locals, creating a new class of straight-born Chinese known as Chinese Peranakan. In Malaysia, this is simply referred to Babas and Nyonyas. The first wave only introduced a small but significant portion of Chinese settlers. The largest wave of Chinese immigrants in Nanyang, which is known as the Southern Sea, was in the late 19th centuries to early 20th centuries. The last Chinese Empire Qing Dynasty collapsed in conjunction with the Chinese revolutions in 1991. These revolutions known as Xinhai Geming, Xinhai revolutions led by Sun Yat-sen. For the civil war between the nationalist Kuomintang and Chinese Communist Party Gongchantang, post the Sino-Japanese war led to more people immigrate to Nanyang for a better life. At the same time, British and Dutch colonizations in Southeast Asia require large labor demand to help with plantations, clean land and also infrastructure. Most Malaysian Chinese and Tonghua Indonesian today are descended from this wave of immigrations. This largest influx of immigrations to both countries are from several prominent Chinese subgroups of the Southern Chinese with respective dialects and cultures. The Hokkien, Cantonese, Hakka, Teochew, Hainan are the five largest Chinese communities in Indonesia and Malaysia. Since both Tionghua Indonesian and Chinese Malaysian share the similar ancestral roots, it's not hard to see culturally we have very similar festivals and very similar food. After assimilation with the local culture, I notice they are a little bit different in our common festivals as well. Take for an example, the first one, Tang Yuan, which is celebrated during the Winter Solstice Festival or Festival Dongzhi on the 21st or 22nd December. In China, the Northern Chinese would prepare dumplings or call it Bang Sit or Ladu Ladu in Malay. But the Southern Chinese, like our ancestors in Fujian and Guangzhou, they will prepare Tang Yuan, Tang Yuan, which is the balls of glutinous rice which symbolize reunion. Each family would prepare a big batch of white dough separate into different portions with different colors. Each family member receives at least one large Tang Yuan in addition to several small ones and they are usually cooked in different kinds of syrup. Usually it's a sweet broth with ginger. So here's the interesting part. In Indonesia, the Tang Yuan is in a very bright pink or green color. Some would add crushed peanuts into the broth and that was what I had when I was in Bao Bao Sulawesi Tenggara. What we had was just rolling up the glutinous rice ball and add some crushed peanut in a very very sweet ginger syrup. Generally, I notice food in Indonesia are sweeter or maybe it has influence from Jawa whereby food in Jawa are generally sweet. So the broth is so sweet that I can't even handle it even though I have a very very sweet tooth. Comparatively, in Malaysia, the Tang Yuan are rather mild in colour. Pale pink and white colour is the traditional versions of Tang Yuan. And to add more varieties, we sometimes add pandan extracts to have a pale hint of green colour. We used to enjoy these desserts together with the common one, uh, the sweet syrup with ginger as I mentioned, boiled with pandan leaves. But nowadays, things have gotten so much fancy and people have actually elevated the dessert into uh, Tang Yuan by adding natural colours like purple yam or pumpkin to have purple and yellow orangey colour. And then we serve it with uh, tafu fa, which is the soybean curd, uh, red bean soup or even almond paste. So sticky rice dumpling is heavily savoured in Chinese in conjunction with the Dragon Boat Festival, which is celebrated on the fifth day of the fifth month in the lunar calendar. 
Dragon Boat Festival is known as Tuan Wu Jie in Mandarin. In Indonesia, it's generally known as Hari Bak Zang. The bak in Hokkien means roll, it means meat, and the zang means zhong. So bak zang in the direct translation would be roll zhong, like the meat dumplings. That is why the famous bak mi in Indonesia. Bak is meat and mi, it means noodle with the meat. Bak so also means uh, meat together with so in Hokkien is called cuo, like rolling something into a round, round shape. So bak so means meatballs. So what is the differences between bakzang of Indonesia and Malaysia versions? First, bakzang in Indonesia are usually from chicken meat, marinated in sweet soy sauce. Not only it is less oily, Tionghoa Indonesians also prefer to mix rice with glutinous rice together. So the outcome is less sticky, more of like a rice cake similar to lontong. In Malaysia, bakzang itself is known as zongzi or zongzi from depends on your hakka or Cantonese descent. So the feelings can differ among Teochew, Hakkas and Hokkien's. Isn't that interesting? The Malaysian type bakzang varies according to different subgroups, but the common characteristic of Malaysian bakzang are usually with pork and with glutinous rice, and then each Chinese subgroup diverts the varieties to their own taste by adding salted egg yolk, so red bean paste, lotus paste, mushroom, chestnuts, and accordingly. The star of Malaysian bakzang is the nyonya zang, nyonya zang, whereby part of the glutinous rice will tinted with, with butterfly pea flour for aesthetic purpose, filled with minced lean pork, candied winter melon, coriander powder, and also wrapped with pandan leaves. I'm not very sure whether in Indonesia they have the similar bakzang, the nyonya zang, because they all they have also their very pranakan. But from my, what I research, Indonesia seems to have cai zang, cai zang. It means dumpling with vegetable fillings, but I have not seen this or eaten any Thai zang in Malaysia, only Bak zang and Ki zang. Ki zang or Kui zang is similar for both Malaysia and Indonesia. Basically, it's glutinous rice with alkaline water without any fillings, and once it is steamed, it is enjoyed with syrup, sugar syrup, or kaya. Coming to the third festival, which is my favorite festival of all, Mid Autumn Festival. This festival is celebrated by having mooncake or kue bulan, mandatory for prayers and enjoy among families while the children play with lanterns and candles in the night. The Chinese original mooncake has a perfectly baked golden brown color skin with lotus paste as a filling and salted egg yolk in the middle. So let me surprise you, Indonesian versions of mooncake look like this. I have not seen this type of mooncake in my life until I saw this in a hypermarket in Jakarta. According to my Chinese colleague, my Dongkok colleague, this mooncake is so traditional, so rare that it is even hardly to be seen in China. And because of a scarcity of lotus paste in Indonesia, such mooncakes are with different varieties of fillings such as chocolate, cheese, milk, durian, jackfruit, chempedak, mung bean, red bean paste and many more. Well, so I tasted this before, not to my liking, I'm sorry. The skin is a little bit thick and I have yet to use to this kind of a filling instead of a lotus paste. Usually you can also find the Chinese original mooncake in Indonesian hypermarket, but these stocks, as far as I understand, are usually imported directly from China. So in contrast, in Malaysia, mooncake has gone way too fancy and it seems like it's no longer a festival, but sort of like a business opportunity. Mooncake are aesthetically made to serve as a gift. We have not only the traditional baked mooncake, we have the snow skin, jelly type with durian, green tea, dragon fruit, chocolate, lava, whatever you name it, all kinds of fancy mooncake. And of course, we come to the most important Chinese festival, that is the Chinese New Year or Tahun Baru in Lake. The word in Lake is originally from Hokkien dialect, which means lunar calendar, Yin Li. So, although I have not personally celebrated in Black in Indonesia, but for this video, I've made some research. Both Tonghua Indonesians and Chinese Malaysian uh, enjoy red color, Kue Keranjang, Nian Gao, Yu Sheng, which is uh, the Yu Sheng. Bebek or Ayam, uh, Bebek means duck, in Malay it's called Ite. And uh, fish, definitely, Kue Mangkok, Fa Gao, Jorok Mandarin, the Gan. But in Malaysia, we seldom have mi panjang umo, chang so mian, telur rebus lang teh, cha ye tan, or kue lapis, chen cheng gao. 
at least or maybe at least in my family we have fa cai or fa choy this black mushy black moss in the first day of chinese new year so of course that is more that i can share especially tang yuan in the first point do you know vietnamese also enjoy glutinous rice ball uh, similar like our tang yuan but the size of their glutinous rice ball are larger with salted mung bean paste inside usually it is served during qingming festival which is the festival Qing bang tomb sweeping day during this day chinese family visit the tombs of their ancestors to clean the gravesite pray to their ancestors and make ritual offerings and speaking of this i want to branch out another interesting fact do you know tomb sweeping day has more attention of the southern chinese the northern chinese in china they pray to their deceased on tomb sweeping day too but more towards a home prayer so the southern chinese like our ancestors are more family oriented just generally speaking I'm sorry if I sort of imply a certain types of a stereotype. So anyway, all of the points here are based on my own observations and if I have many miss out, if I've missed out any of the key differences or I've made any mistakes, please let me know in the comment sections below and uh, tell me also what topics you would like me to talk about in the future. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye.